All right, welcome to today's webinar on measuring body voltage. My name is Steve Guy, I'm Desco's Eastern Regional Sales Manager. And assisting me throughout this presentation today is Stargraph Flooring Sales Manager, Rob DeRosa. Please ask your questions as we go. We will be stopping at the midway point to address any questions. So you can type out your questions in the panel to the right. And we will be addressing your questions at the very end. All questions will be monitored by Desco brand manager, Jeffrey Brake. Today, we will cover footwear slash flooring system requirements. We will go over resistance to ground versus body voltage. And we will be showing you through a live demonstration on how to conduct a resistance to ground test of the operator, as well as the walking test. The ESD Association is the organization responsible for making industry standards. Uh, S20.20 .20 is the widely accepted standard document used by many electronics manufacturers. Per the snippet of the picture you see right now below, the two test methods we will focus on are STM 97.1 and STM 97.2. In 2014, the ESDA added product qualification requirements to the standard. Section 7.3 now reads, a product qualification plan shall be established to ensure that the ESD control items that have been selected meet the requirements in the plan. The test methods, <clears throat> the test methods are, and required limits are located in the product qualification columns in tables two and three. The most important part to get out of this snippet is that product qualification is normally conducted during the initial selection, selection of ESD control items. You can, do, you can use any of the following methods. You can use your product specification review, an independent lab evaluation, or an internal lab evaluation. For ESD control items that were installed by the organization before the adoption of the standard, ongoing compliance verification records can be used as evidence of qualification. Now on the product qualification, STM 97.1 focuses on the resistance measurements in combination with a person, and STM 97.2 focuses on the body voltage measurements in combination with a person. Product qualification by the letter is generally used by flooring and ESD test labs. Again, to reiterate, it is required uh, before initial installations occur, okay? Well, I think I went ahead of myself here. Product qualification also requires a test sample size and an environmental control uh, during the initial installation phase. Again, no, product qualifications is to be done once. Once it is done, which is before your installations, uh, you don't have to do it again, okay? So for today's webinar and live demonstration, we will be focused on compliance verification for measuring body voltage. We will be using a surface resistance meter as well as a body voltage meter to conduct all tests. Your footwear or flooring systems include your foot grounders, your shoes, your booties, and as for flooring, you have your epoxy or tile, floor finish or mats. An important thing to note here is that all combinations must be tested together. Having a QPL makes this process easier because you can standardize on one specific type of product, i.e. foot grounders or your floors. Again, you will have fewer combinations to test if you standardize to fewer products on your QPL. And we added a snippet uh, to the right there on what a QPL looks like, okay? So if you have uh, fewer products on there, then you have fewer combinations to test, which makes the process a little bit easier. Jeffrey, do we have any questions at this point? Sorry, Steve, yeah, we do. Um, let's see, uh, the, what, can you, can you clarify the difference between S2020, um, which you cited, and also 97.1 and 97.2, the two standards documents? Yes, sir, great question. S20.20 .20 sets or defines the resistance and body voltage limits 
whereas STM 97.1 and 97.2 provide the test procedure and test equipment needed. Do we have any okay. qu other questions? So 97.1 and 97.2 are the test methods. S2020 is the, that's the limits? Or is you got it. what the it reference for the limits? limits. You got right. it. it, defines the required yeah. limits. Okay. Um, a, um, another question, it's more of a comment here, but somebody asked, do I have to test all combin, what, what does all combinations mean of flooring and footwear? Um, can you can you elaborate on that just a little bit? You got it. All combinations. That's another great question. All combinations means your entire floor system. So if you have uh, an ESD floor uh, and you have operators wearing your foot grounders, you would have to test that entire system to verify that the resistance to ground of the operator is actual is under one times ten to the ninth, as well as the body voltage measurements, which is the peak voltage of less than hundred volts on the body. So the entire system is being tested. So that's what I mean by all combination. The entire, of the your, entire system being the uh, the foot grounders or the shoes that the operator is wearing, and then the flooring, substrates, or even floor finish too, right? All three of those things are all four of the uh, all combinations of that. Yes, sir. It would be the operator, the foot grounders, or the ESD shoes, whatever it is that the operator is wearing, as well as what uh, the floor. Uh, yeah. or your so shoe, yeah. shoes would be on that group too right yes sir okay okay uh another question here uh my this is more a little bit more specific customer saying my my floor was installed in 2013 uh what are the requirements for product qualifications great question jeffrey Product qualification is designed to be done prior to installation, okay? Uh, so prior to you in, in making that product a part of your QPL, that is when product qualification is needed. So for many people on the call right now, since your products or floors are already installed, you would just need to conduct your resistance to ground of the body, of the person in combination with the floors, as well as the body voltage measurement in combination with the floor. So again, product qualification is only required during the installation phase of your ESD control area. Okay. So for people who already have a floor down, qualifications uh, is going to be a little, it's treated a little bit different, right? Yes, sir. You got it. Gotcha. Um, just to clarify on the, the combinations of testing, this is more of a common, again, somebody here with a, um, if they have three types of foot grounders, let's say a uh, a heel strap, a booty, uh, a disposable booty, I mean, and a, and and ESD shoes, and then they have two floor two types of floors, let's say uh, you know epoxy in one area and floor tile in another area, and people are moving between those three those those areas. That means you have a total of six different tests that you would ultimately have to do. Um, so I just want to clarify that. Yes. So that's why limiting the number of products used uh, for the flooring and footwear system can be so important. Okay, I think that's it for now. Um, if you, again, continue to ask these questions, I'll try to answer them um, as we're going here, but it, we'll also take some time at the end, right, Steve, to, to, to answer some questions. Yes, sir, we will. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. So moving on, before we go into the live demo, the two products we'll, we'll, we will use during the demo are your part number 19431, which is the body voltage meter, as well as part number 19290, which is your surface resistance meter kit with the handheld electrode. Now we will transition to start off flooring brand manager, Rob DeRosa. I will bring up the camera here and we can look at Rob right on the screen there for our live demonstration, perfect. So before we do the walking test, we must first verify the resistance to ground of our floor mat itself, in addition to the resistance of the person in combination with the floors or your floor mat. Right now, Rob, as you just saw, is showing our digital surface resistance meter. 
uh, meter kit, as well as the handheld probe for the operator, as well as the two five pound weights that are included in your kit when you purchase the kit. So the first test Rob will do is a resistance to ground test on the floor mat. As he is doing this test, per S20.20, the required resistance limit for the floors or your floor mat is less than one times 10 to the ninth ohms. No, this is important. No, S20.20 calls for a resistance to ground test only. Rob, could you share your results with us, yes, sir? Yes. One, could you hold it up to you to the screen, please? 1.5 times 10 to the fourth was Rob's reading. So we are well under the limit of one times 10, less than one times 10 to the ninth ohms per S20.20. So right now you can probably see Rob is wearing uh, our Desco full coverage grounders, the bright yellow spider web foot grounders uh, on his shoe, with his shoes at the moment. S20.20 calls for having one of those on each foot. So if you can't just have one, you gotta have one on both feet. Now Rob would do a resistance to ground test of our entire system, his foot grounders in combination with the floor mat. The resistance limit for this test is also less than one times 10 to the ninth ohms per S20.20. Rob, could you share your readings with us? And as you can see right now, we got 5.5 times 10 to the six, which means we are well under uh, the limit of less than one times 10 to the ninth ohms. Now we will transition to a live demo. Oh, I went too fast there. We will transition to a live demo of the walking test by following the pattern as highlighted in figure one of STM 97.2. So what Rob just held up uh, is our standard body voltage meter along with the handheld probe. It is important to use a meter capable of recording volt voltages, voltage peaks generated by the operator on a graph. So the first test, as you can see, what Rob is doing is the walking test and following the pattern on STM 97.2. And STM 97.2 calls for a voltage peak of less than 100 volts peak. Rob, what were you able to generate? So with Rob's foot grounders on, Rob was able to generate a positive 12 volts and zero volts negative, okay, which means we are well under the limit of less than one times 10, I'm sorry, of less than 100 volts. One of the most important things to remember in this test is that um, the reason Rob was able to remain at less than 100 volts is because his entire system is grounded. So his floor mat is grounded as well as his, the operator who was wearing the foot grounders, which means we won't generate anything close to 100 volts. The second test Rob will perform is the walking test without his foot grounders. To show the difference between having foot grounders on and an ESD floor mat that is grounded versus not having uh, any foot grounders on and walking on your ESD floor or floor mat. Rob will tell us and he's doing five tests. So he's gonna do five patterns and he will tell us his results. So Rob was able to generate 154 volts positive and zero volts negative without any foot grounders. So as you can see, we're well above the limit of less than 100 volts, 194 volts positive. So again, the important reason uh, as to why he got a high voltage re uh, reading there is that the entire system isn't grounded. So despite having a grounded floor mat here, as you can see in the picture, uh, operators can still generate high voltages if the entire system isn't grounded. So it's important that your system is grounded versus just the in individual components in that system. Thank you, Rob, for the live demo. And now we will transition to our next slide here. All right. So once you've done all your testing and done all your readings, one of the cool features about our unit is that it has the ability to download the, or output the data. Okay, so the first step as shown on the product technical bulletin online is to download WT Manager software. Once that software is downloaded, our body voltage meter connects to your computer using a USB cable. From there, you can view the body voltage results 
on a graph as shown in the right hand side using the WT manager software. One of the most important things to remember here is that per STM 97.1 and 97.2, it is important to have a meter that has the capability to give you a graph, okay? Uh, and that helps you uh, with backup documentation that shows your products are verified or qualified to be in your ESD control program. One of the most important features to also remember on our body voltage meter is that it records up to nine tests until you output those nine results to start up a whole new set of testing again. So remember, our unit will record up to nine tests until you output that information to your computer to do additional testing. Jeffrey, do we have any questions at this point? We do. Um, one of them, the voltage that that shows up on the on that on the body voltage meter is just to clarify is voltage that is generated by the operator, right, or is by the person holding it. That's not voltage that somehow uh, transferred to them through other purposes. It, it's it's based on their them tribo charging in the stepping pattern pattern, correct? Right. Correct. A good way to explain it. Okay. Correct. So the voltage Rob uh, showed on the screen are all voltages that he generated um, by following the walking pattern per STM 97.2. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what, one question, why, why did Rob do five walking patterns? Um, I don't think we, we clarified that or if he, um, and is there a, a required number of tests? You got it. That's a great question. Section 5.31 of STM 97.2 calls for a resistance test of five patterns, okay? So um, it calls for the floor material or a minimum of five tests for every 5,000 square feet of floor material, which is greater, whichever is greater. So again, S20.20, I'm sorry, STM 97.2, section 5.31 calls for five patterns, okay? Uh, and um, whichever is greater. So five patterns of a minimum of five tests for every 460 square meters or 5,000 square feet of floor material, whichever is greater. So like, to give you that clarification, the best answer would just be uh, section 5.31 requires that operators conduct up to five patterns, which is why Rob did five. That, that's in, S, that's in 90, uh, STM 97.2? You got it. Okay. Section five point um, three. Can you clarify why the limit or uh, why the limit's a hundred volts? Yes, uh, the limit is a hundred volts on the operator because ESD sensitive items are are very sensitive, right? Uh, so they can be susceptible to ESD damage at fifty volts to even a hundred volts. So we want to make sure that operators stay under a hundred volts to even less than fifty volts when handling static uh, sensitive items, especially on the ESD floor. So if they're moving around okay. the EPA, if they're moving around the manufacturing plant, they wanna uh, remain at, uh, at a low voltage, body voltage measurement because they don't wanna damage the components that are they're, they're transporting or holding in their hands or in the carts. Let me add to that, yeah. that S2020 is written to 100 volts. That's that if to be S2020 compliant, you need to maintain voltages of less to, than 100 volts. That's why we use that as the number. Um, obviously, there there are more sen sensitive applications where um, c end users or or electronic manufacturers would want to be below that number. So uh, let me let me ask one more question here. I think. Um, uh, does Desco provide test results for combinations of our Florian footwear products? Great question. Again, no, we uh, Desco doesn't provide uh, test results, but we do supply the products or equipment for companies to test in an environmental control chamber. Right. And Ra, um, our Stack Guard Florian product, we've helped install many floors, right, where this is a concern on the product qualification and the initial product qualification process, right? Correct. 
So um, I think those are all the questions I think we can answer here. There are probably a few more questions that we, went, we will follow up with people uh, in emails or on phone calls. So um, I don't think we want, uh, I think that's probably gonna be it for today. Okay. Well, thank you all for your time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. And if you have additional questions, you can always reach out to me via email or phone call or Rob DeRosa, as you can see there, our contact information is on the screen or you can reach out to our service department and they'll get that question to us. Again, thank you for your time and see you at the next webinar. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome, thank you.